Hi there. Welcome to chapel, everybody. I'm Pastor Chris. I know I haven't had the pleasure of meeting all of you as we have a lot of new students, and I hope I get to do that soon. But I'm glad to be here at chapel as we're starting a new series today called Thanks. We're talking all about being thankful, which makes sense since we're in the month of Thanksgiving, right? Today, we're learning all about the Ten Commandments, or what I like to call God's top ten list, because they are the ten rules for living our best life, the rules that God first gave to the Israelites. But let's talk for a second about the top ten list in your house. What are the rules in your house? Think for a second. Do you have more than ten rules at home? If you do, raise your hand right now. Does anyone have fewer than ten rules at home? You raise your hand right now. Can you silently, inside your head, list some of the rules in your house? Think about that for a second. Hmm. Well, in our family, we have a dog, a little Italian greyhound named Dante. And sometimes, Dante forgets to do his business outside. One of the rules in our house is if you are the one who notices that Dante had an accident, then you're supposed to clean it up. Ask me how often that happens. Well, <laughs> where else do we have to follow rules? Let's think about that. Where else do we have to follow rules? Well, at school, where you are right now, got to raise your hand, and lots of other rules like that. In stores, got to wear masks now. And if you touch something, if you break it, you got to buy it. When we're in a car, got to wear a seatbelt, drive a certain speed. Or in an airplane, got to make sure to follow the rules. Why do you think we have rules? Well, today we're going to find out why. We're going to find out about a few important rules that God gave the Israelites. We're going to learn about the importance of keeping God first by looking at the first four rules or commandments that God gave to Israel. And that brings us to this week's big idea. And I'm encouraging you right now in your class to give a drum roll. Come on, keep it going. Our big idea is we can thank God for being God. Okay, say that one more time. We can thank God for being God. I want to invite you to pick up your Bibles and turn to Exodus chapter 19. Now, while you're getting there, you might remember the story of the Israelites wandering in the desert and complaining to God because they wanted more food. Do you remember that story? Do you remember what God did for them? Yeah, that's right. God provided food from heaven, manna. Well, today we're going to learn about what God did for the Israelites next. Have you found Exodus 19 in your Bible yet? I'll wait. Are you ready? You got it? Okay, here it is from Exodus chapter 19. On the morning of the third day, thunder roared and lightning flashed, and a dense cloud came down on the mountain. There was a long, loud blast from a ram's horn, and all the people trembled. Moses led them out from the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. All of Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord had descended on it in the form of fire. The smoke billowed into the sky like smoke from a black kiln, and the whole mountain shook violently. As the blast of the ram's horn grew louder and louder, Moses spoke and the Lord thundered his reply. The Lord came down on the top of Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses climbed the mountain. Whoa, can you imagine what it was like to be in the presence of God? Do you remember what the Bible said it was like on the mountain when God came down to meet the Israelites? There was thunder, lightning, very, very frightening, clouds, smoke, fire, the sounds of trumpets, and a trembling mountain. God used all these fireworks to remind the people that as our God, He is powerful and mighty. That as our Creator, the Creator of all life, our God reigns over all the earth. Now you heard, God called Moses to the top of the mountain, and he did this to meet with him so that God could give Moses a list of Ten Commandments or rules for the Israelites to follow. So turn the page, it shouldn't be very far, and go to Exodus 20, and let's look at the first four of those Ten Rules or Commandments. You there? Okay, here we go. Exodus 20, verse 1, Then God gave the people all these instructions. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must have no other gods but me. Rule number one, put God first. Verse 4, You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I am the Lord your God. I'm a jealous God, and I will not tolerate your affection for other gods. Rule number two, worship only God. And then you can skip to verse seven. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Rule number three, respect God's name. 
And then in verse 8, remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. That includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and all the foreigners living among you. For six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day, God rested. That's why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Rule number four, rest and worship God on the Sabbath or Sunday. The first four commandments are focused on God, who God is and how we can worship God. Can you remember what those first four commandments were? Hmm. Put God first. Worship only God, number two. Number three, respect God's name. And number four, rest and worship God on the Sabbath or Sunday. So why do you think God gives us all these rules? Why does God give us the Ten Commandments? The answer is to show us how to live the best way possible how to live in a way that loves God through how we love and care for each other. Now, sometimes we don't like to follow the rules, right? Sometimes we can believe rules aren't fun or even necessary. Have you ever played a game like this, a board game like this one? This is one of our favorites. All games, whether they are board games or sport games, sports games, they have rules, right? And the rules are important. Why? Why are the rules important? Because what would happen without those rules in a sports game or a board game? What would happen? How would we know who goes first? How would we know whose turn it is? If we didn't have rules, what if everybody just started moving whenever they wanted and however they wanted all at the same time? Imagine a baseball game where everyone grabs a bat and everyone's throwing a ball and everyone's trying to hit the balls and swing the bats at the same time. It would be crazy, right? It might be funny for a few minutes just to see everybody doing whatever they want, but it wouldn't make for a fun game we'd get frustrated, we'd give up, we wouldn't want to play anymore. Rules are a tool to teach us and to remind us of what's most important, of how to play fair, of how we can all have fun and enjoy ourselves together. God's rules, God's top 10 are like that too. It's not about knowing the rules themselves as much as it is, as it is following the rules so that our life together is good, fair, and fun for everyone. You know, once when someone tried to ask Jesus what the most important rule of God's was, Jesus said that all of God's rules, his top 10, can be summed up like this. Love God with everything you are and love your neighbor, the people around you, the way you love yourself. So why does God give us all these rules? To show us, to give us a plan for how to love him and how to love each other in the best way possible. Remember, love is more important than rules. We love God with everything we are by speaking and acting towards each other in a way that is kind and caring. Now, sometimes it can be hard, right? It can be hard to follow God's rules. We all make mistakes. We all forget things. We all have moments, (laughs) I do too, when we choose to do the wrong thing rather than the right thing. But God doesn't just give us a bunch of rules to follow. God also gives us, through Jesus coming down, the love we need so that we can grow and get better at treating each other, treating ourselves the way he treats us, with forgiveness, with encouragement, and with mercy. God loves us and wants us to help each other, to love him by loving each other. And for that, for giving us these rules, for showing us how to follow them, and through Jesus enabling us to love like he loves us, we can thank God for being God. It was great to be with you today in chapel. Blessings, and I'll see you next time.